Hello, Guilty Feminists. It's Jessica Regan here, delighted to tell you that Big Speeches returns with a host of workshops for spring 2023. Our communications workshop, Big Speeches, will take place online on the last Sunday of each month, March through to May inclusive. So that's March 26th, April 30th and May 28th, all at 3pm Greenwich Mean Time and all online. Go to guiltyfeminist.com forward slash big speeches to secure your place. We can't wait to see you to help you take space, find your voice and get the most out of the year ahead. I'm a feminist, but um, I've got a violent son. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There's more. Um, Yeah, could be in that. Uh, um, So recently, he's less so now, he's seven, but there's no comedy in that. Um, I recently spent two years on a wait list and he's finally got his place in our local (laughs) ninja school. What? Yeah. Ninja school? Yeah. He goes to ninja school. Literal ninja (laughs) school? Yeah. Wait. What? Not like just karate? Ninja? Ninja school. It's called ninja school. Fucking hell. Two year wait list. I can see why. And I thought Starfighters. he'd go there and learn. They get very cute outfits. I thought he was going to learn discipline, respect, <laughs> composure, and perhaps the ability to move around even slightly quietly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it turns out, that nah, it's actually just really full-on fighting. Full-on Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He's learned kicking, punching, shuriken throwing, and grappling. Really effective grappling. Now he can take me out from the waist. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Do you ever lift your son? Because you love to lift. I can lift my son, yeah. Can you lift him above, right above your head? I can lift him <gasps> above my head. God, you're I've so a, strong. I've got a, a p- big PB this morning I've been working towards for two years. Is that a personal <laughs> best? Yeah. I've got a, a, a hundred kilogram front squat. It's good, isn't it? Wow. Thanks. Amazing. You're so strong. I've got so little body strength. I wonder if you could lift me. I'd love to have a go, Debs. <laughs> I know I could. I definitely could lift you, by the way. No. Yeah, I could. Really? Yeah, hundred percent. Do it. I what if I? What I if could I lift I you off the floor it. for reps. I could lift you off the floor for reps. Low, easy. But like, how? Just like a well, we. I don't know how to do. It. Yeah, I. I'd want I'd your clothes too nice. <laughs> That's like gra- grab on. Yeah. To That's the reason. An, I, an area. Uh, let's let's <laughs> let's let's. We pretend. could do a piggyback. I could do squats with you in a piggyback. I'd be down for that. But I really would worry about damaging you. You wouldn't damage me. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't She's in a mini skirt. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about hurting you. You won't hurt me. All right. Well, let's do. It. Let's see if you can do it once. Okay. I think if we'd had longer to work out the logistics, it could have been more spectacular. Lovely. That was thrilling and exciting. It was like a roller coaster. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just going to open my notes to get my Amma Feminist butts back. Wonder why you're not allowed red wine in Hall One. Really funny sign at the bar, isn't it? No red wine in Hall One. What has someone done with red wine in this hall? I'm a feminist, but I fancy Boris Becker. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. What I'm out of date, has he cancelled? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> legally, yes. He's been sent to jail for uh, oh, bankruptcy fraud. Oh, um, I think you can still fancy a fraudster. <laughs> the Tinder, you can fancy the Tinder swindler. I mean, that's a different kind of fraud, mm. isn't it? They're different kind of fraud. That's a different type of swindler. Different. I, don't, I definitely don't fancy the Let's have a look at him. This okay, fair, but I'll tell you what I fancy. Show me his face and let uh, me judge him. Okay, all right. Where Who's that? Daniel Radcliffe. I'll tell you. I'll no, tell that, you. that used to be Simon Cowell before <laughs> fuck knows what happened there. <laughs> Absolute there mess they've okay, made of that the, one, haven't they? 
Whoever he's got doing these bits has fucked it. He looks like a little baby crow. Someone's stuck a little hairs on like a ball sack, doesn't he now? Simon Cap. He's an advert for not know. getting it all. Yeah. Um, Let Boris it grow, Becker. Grow, grow. Yeah, I don't get that actually. Okay, all right. Yeah. He's he melted since I last had a look at him. Okay. Boris Becker mm. was the hottest tennis player, in my opinion. Yeah. He won Wimbledon when he was super, super young. Like, he was a teenager, wasn't he, when he won Wimbledon? Little ginger he, baby. He, <laughs> he was very... I think he's just got a thing about him. But then his wife was literally pregnant and in labour when he shagged a waitress in the broom cupboard of a restaurant. She was literally... Now, most people know the broom cupboard in the, re, in the restaurant story because that, that, that broom cupboard led to a paternity suit because oh, she got pregnant. No. When they say you can't get pregnant standing up, but that's obviously not true. Oh, well, I hope we haven't created a child with that lift I just did there. <laughs> I hope we have. That'd be the most feminist child. would be the most feminist child of all time. If we, if if one of us is pregnant, or both, Trunchbull meets Wednesday Adams. I mean, <laughs> Trunchbull Adams. Um, oh, can you imagine the joy? Um, uh, he, most people know that, that, that story because he mm. got knocked up the, um, the, the person, whoever it was. I yeah. think it was a waitress in a, in a broom cupboard. And I apologise to the person who, if you're saying, well, I wasn't a waitress, I was this, and it wasn't yeah. a broom cupboard, it was a hallway, whatever. But it was, that's the, the headline of the story is that. Yeah. And she got pregnant, and then he said, that's not my baby. I could it possibly be because oh, my wife was in God. labour at the time. And she went, well, please spit on this stick. And he <gasps> said, no. And she said, well, I've nicked one of your hairs and it is your baby. Something like that. Ooh. These The details might be completely wrong and not factual, but that's the <laughs> idea. to listen to this story, though. It's def- no, it's definitely the truth. Mm. The, 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 the top line is he knocked up someone while his wife was in labour. Yeah. So as feminist uh, crushers go, problematic faves and anti-feminist crushers go, Boris Becker is one of the worst. Yeah. He's now, though, also got really ugly. So maybe that... Oh, <laughs> don't say that. So maybe that is actually quite feminist of you to um, I just want a little fancy, go on him. I, if I fancied a man when he was young and lovely... Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, old, old and lovely. He looks oh, like Alan Sugar now, though, Debs. Yeah, but <laughs> I still see the young person in... I still see young 19-year-old Wimbledon winner there when I look at him. Yeah. It's the same way as I can still see... Uh, like, if I meet Jeremy Irons, mm. I'll still see him as Charles Ryder from the original Bride Center Visited. Look, I say this as someone who fancies old men. I, one of my earliest childhood crushes was on Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this. I've crushed that Margaret K. Bourne Smith show. Yeah. <gasps> so um, funny. That was the funniest episode of Crushed there's ever been. Do you, ever, do you guys listen to Crushed? Oh my god, it's so funny! It's Margaret Craven Smith. I've listened Smith to them all. Talks to people about their first crushes. So I talked about a school teacher. Um, you know, Katie like, Wicks like, episode is amazing. There's some amazing, episodes. amazing ones, but none is funnier than listening <laughs> to Jess Foster Q justify her crush on Gandalf, <laughs> not not Ian McKellen, the character Gandalf, <laughs> by saying, "Well, what was it? I, I lost my granddad. I did yeah. lose a granddad very young." <laughs> I cried laughing listening to that podcast. Oh I fancy, God. and still do a bit fancy Gandalf. And even I think Boris Becker looks a bit too a bit old. Yeah. He's, got, he's got a power, hasn't he, Gandalf, though? Like, More than one power. Fucking he very give, powerful. Like, I one feel... of the most powerful of all wizards of all time, arguably. So. He could give you... Think that in your pipe. Surely he could give you exactly a magical could orgasm, do. couldn't he, Gandalf? Yeah. You'd hope, wouldn't you? If you imagine if you've got all those skills, but you're shit in the sack. <laughs> <laughs> what, he can transform the powers of an earth wind. But can't find uh, the clitoris. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, it would just be oh, an God, old man, an old white man, though, wouldn't it? It would be like that. It'd be like, <laughs> what, you can literally part an ocean, but you can't find the G-spot. Yeah. Fucking typical. <laughs> do, you think, do you think Moses... There is something. When he was <laughs> yeah. da- she was down there, and she's like, well, maybe if I set fire to it. <laughs> Burning bush joke, a yeah. little bit of yeah, really nice. A little bit of Bible really humour, nice. gang, gang. 
gang. I didn't spend all those years on my knees for nothing. There's a lovely... <laughs> Like a little prayer that can take me there. <laughs> just sort of, I just should have left you on your own Jesus. for that bit. Oh, okay, Jesus yeah. song. That's Very Madonna's nice. biblical past coming out, and she sort of sexed up Jesus, didn't she? Love it. Anyway, Love I'm basically the idea that Madonna gods and is, I think, what we've learned here. Do you want to do an I'm a feminist part? Sure. Um, I'm a feminist, but uh, my son has um, started at ninja school. Where he's learning Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And um, the first time I went to pick him up, you watch the last 15 minutes where they do a shuriken battle. And then they all have to kneel in in a line on the floor. And all these, they're all between five and eight years old. And all together, they chant. There is no wrong or right way to be. So I will just be me. And then all all together they go, and they slap the mat. At the same time, and um, I cried. I cried. I cried out my eyes. This is a culture. I cried out my eyes. It's a I think cult. it's lovely. Thank you very much. Are you listening? There is no wrong. All right, where to we? So I will just be me. Oos. I wept. Do you? Is that your morning mantra now? Yeah, I think it's. No, it is all nice that a young mantras. generation of children are being raised. As ninjas. As ninjas. As ninjas. <laughs> oh! My, if, for reference, my son isn't really that violent anymore, but he's loud, like he's heavy of foot. Do you know what I mean? We thought there was something wrong with our house, because if, <laughs> if he's in the room above, it's a like, boom, 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 boom. But it's just every house we're in. Like, oh, God, every neighbour we've ever had, every stuff. guest we've ever had has been like, Jew, God, is everything all right up there? And it's like, yeah, he's just taking a step from one side of the room <laughs> to the other. Like, boom, boom. I genuinely well, it's thought like he could, pops I've, in I'm water prepared to pay a tenner a week just on the hope of learning to tiptoe by the age of yeah. twelve. Because ninjas, that's the thing about them is they yeah, you can't sneak around. This lad's not sneaking around. <laughs> uh, I'm a feminist, but if nobody judged me when I was a really old lady, um, I would love to be exactly like Jennifer Coolidge's character in White Lotus. <laughs> Oh. Now, obviously, I would have to change my identity or people would harshly judge me. Right. But what I'm questioning is if, if I was good for my whole life and really tried hard to do all the right things, and I knew, like, I had five, I was about five years, I had five years of my life left. I don't know how I would know that, but in this, per, in this scenario, I do. Would it be all right to escape for the last five years and just go to White Lotus and uh, be irritating and drink rose? And like unse- her lack of self awareness. She's not very old, by the way. I'm just saying, could I do that bit of my life at the end? Could I just go, oh, I'm going to take a few years off feminism right at the end? No yeah. one will miss me. I'll just, oh. l- I'll just loiter around with fabulous gay men in palazzos and have no self awareness. Could I? Yes. Oh my God, you've earned it, babe. I feel by that age, I will have <laughs> two years. I don't say two years, five years is probably too much. I might get a bit bored. But two years, 18 months even, would be good enough. A year, a year, a year. I don't be plan fine. to have... Six months of Jennifer You've got to do it, do it. I've really, Six months? I'm really lowering the time. Five now. years. You enjoy I'm, it. I think a good, a good year where I could just holiday in different places for each season and oh. then I'd die in the last one. That'd be fine. <laughs> In an intriguing way. Yeah. How about that? Please do. I want that yeah. for you. I think... So I just... I'll have to change my name. But So if you ever, in many years' time, if you're ever at a very glamorous holiday resort and there's a woman in a large hat with huge sunglasses who seems quite old and she's only known as the White Lotus, it will be me. <laughs> now, how I'll get away with this is I'm going to stage my own death. When I get very old... I've worked yeah. out how to stage my own death, by the way. And this is only when I'm very old. If you put on Twitter that you've died, people believe them. I'm going to change. Is that my... it? Is that how you yeah. do it? I'm going to change my you Wikipedia. Put it on Twitter. I'm going to put... change my Wikipedia page. I'm going to put it on Twitter, and then I'm going to have a guilty feminist memorial show, right? Which you will host, I assume. Jess. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. No problem. I mean, you'll be very old as well, but not as old as well. me, I'm sure. And it'll be full of elderly. You know, it'll just be Sarah Pascoe being pushed out in a wheelchair and things like that. It'd be lovely. It'd be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> um, Susan McComa coming out to do a tribute and stuff but it'll be oh, all really? uh, and you'll all be old as well all my fans will be old by then because you know the young people will be on to something else they, will, they, won't be, they won't be coming so it'll be basically in an old person's home the memorial show I hope you'll all come you're all welcome 
And I will sit at the back in a dark glasses and I sat because I want to see what everyone says about me. I definitely want to come to my own funeral. I'm planning my own funeral 100%. If my funeral is ever advertised, I'm telling you, look around, I will be there. Um, <laughs> I'm not having it after I die. I don't want everyone saying nice things after I've died. I won't be there. I won't Even if it's it. just a brain in a jar with a hat and some sunglasses on it. <laughs> I think I'll have it at the London Palladium. I think my funeral should be at the London Palladium. Oh, here we fucking go. I'm, I'm planning it. I'll be in the gods right at the back with some little opera glasses. No one else will be allowed up there. It'll be all locked off maybe in a box anyway but not in the, the box God. <laughs> I'll be at Dubs oh, she was in where was she she was in the box and people think we meant the coffin which will be a stage coffin yeah. I will actually be in the royal box anyway oh I thought you were making a vagina joke then <laughs> sorry I won't be in my own vagina <laughs> could be anyone's well let's Continue Listen. back to the gods. She's up there in the gods. She's up You'll there with the gods. She's up there with Gandalf and Zeus and all the other shit kisses. Excellent. This is this is. I'm working this out as I go, but I think it's a really strong thought. Mm. Uh, I will throw my own funeral, memorial girls from show. I'll be at the back, big hat, sunglasses, and then I'm out. Like basically, if I had this, will how I will reason it. If I yeah. had died, then it would be fine not to do any more feminism. Right? Yeah. Slash comedy, slash writing. 100%, yeah. It's always fine. Not to, it's always fine. It doesn't feel fine for me now Got to it. just quit, right? But is that really bad? Almost every time I do a gig, just before I go on, I think, if you want, you can just walk off. <laughs> but you don't, and that's the key. No, but I check that I know I'm allowed. No, it's good to check in and make sure you're doing things intentionally. Yeah. But this is nice then, but however again. long I've got left... It's going to be completely indulgent, selfish, mm. because the, in, in the real world, I've died. That's the narrative, right? Yeah. I think this is a plan. People are looking at me like they're not sure. But I think this is an amazing fucking plan. Yeah. Who's, down yeah. for, who's down for the secret yeah. death when you're elsewhere? Yeah. I think it's a good plan. Yeah. So, listen, on that basis of that applause, I'm going to have a commune-style island right. of a load of elderly ladies and people of minority genders who faked their own death, visited their own funeral and come to live the last few years in absolute hedonism and decadence. It's just going to be... Uh, it's going to be just like a massive queer orgy, really. Oh, I think, yeah, OK. <laughs> Lovely. Would you be up for that? <laughs> OK, yeah. OK. Yeah. I don't feel you're as sold as I am, but... I, I just want to see what state I'm in by that age. <laughs> I might be ever so tired. <laughs> it was all sounding like I was well in, and then I thought, oh, that last bit sounds Exhausting. ever so tiring. Oh, you don't? It's <laughs> I'm of an age sense. now. I, this, how, yesterday, I'm so old that yesterday I caught myself thinking, oh, you're going to have a, a full calf tea, are you, after 6 pm? <laughs> oh, what have I become? But I've said that out loud. A full calf tea full after calf 6 pm. Yeah. I know, I know what you mean. But listen, I just need it to be clear. The, the orgy will not be mandatory. Like it's, oh, right. It's obviously consensual. It's a consensual yeah. island. Well, if I'm not joining in, what am I there just to watch? Like a creep. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's nothing or is there like an outdoor watching. bit just for sunbathing? Don't kink shame voyeurs. I'm not kink shaming voyeurs. <laughs> I absolutely was. I was kink-shaming voyeurs. I was kink-shaming voyeurs. I'm so sorry. I never thought I'd say this. Only on this podcast. <laughs> I'm so sorry, voyeurs. <laughs> ah. So, no, you can attend... Creep or and not. proud. You're, you're, Creep and proud. Li- listen, you don't have to even attend the orgy. Okay. Orgies will be optional. And Got it. Infrequent, let's be honest. We're, yeah. we're off. But occasionally, like first Sunday of the month or something, I think. Not... not not every night. First Sunday of the month, I think, will be orgy night. <laughs> okay. For those who wish to partake. Yeah, yeah. Then there'll be, you know, topless Tuesdays or whatever. But it's just, <laughs> as it comes, that's to be decided. Just... Yeah, where's the balance here? If you want to coax me in, you need less of topless Tuesdays and more sort of extra clothes Fridays. <laughs> uh, well, you can be in charge of extra clothes Fridays. Yeah, I'll do extra clothes Fridays. Okay. I think everyone can just do what they want. And in everyone fact, can just awkwardly look away from one another. This is a very British island. Yeah. <laughs> My little right. corner of it is. Yeah. I'm, I'm down for it. I'm down for it. Um, yep. Do you have any more I'm a feminist buttons? Yeah. Um, I'm a feminist, but I've run out of jokes about ninja school. So it's time to admit, at age 39, I don't really understand where the we comes out. <laughs> I say that as a queer woman. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and in brilliant start, news, it's just a hole. It's well, a in brilliant news, I said this earlier to my partner, who's a woman and way gayer than me. And she was like, ah, oh my God, she had her hand, head was in her hands. Oh God, I can't believe you don't know. I didn't say I was doing it for this. I just said, darling, and where does the week come out? <laughs> and then she was like, oh, what? Oh, and then she went, it comes out the same bit. All the period comes out and all of that. No! no! She, she thought it came out of the main pipe. Uh, and it's so, I was like, no way, it doesn't come out of that. No, it, no, it, it might come out the clip. She was like, no. no. It doesn't. Neither of us knew. And we looked it up and you, you it, is, it, it is not a very feminist hole. It's <laughs> very shy. Tiny spectacle, speckle of a thing somewhere around there. It is What's, not. It is not proud. It's not leaning in. It is squirrelled itself right away. Why have we been given a whole extra imperceptible concept of a hole? I, okay. And um, and people with penises get to do all the different fluids just from the one sort of dangly cloaca. <laughs> um, I. Yeah, I've really now been sure. I've it's na- not a very feminist hole. It's not. I mean, how much more? I've got a it beautiful does all that work. Of it's it. called. Is it called the urethra? The urethral opening, short narrow tube that carries urine from the bladder to the outside. But I'm not. I don't think you can say your own urethra isn't feminist enough for you. It's not. I don't know where it is. It's hidden itself away. It wants to be a little bit more sure of itself. I had no idea it even existed. My friend, brilliant writer called Rose Ruane, has described the wee hole, piss hole, as um, a very much valued member of the cast, but it doesn't do any of the showstoppers. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like she's. And the most amazing author, please look her up, Rose Ray. She's awesome. Wow. Everything she says is very funny. Okay, yeah, I, right. I didn't, well, I had no so idea. I st- if, you, if, you went, if you went, put your finger on it now, I couldn't. <laughs> well, I think it would be an appropriate no, obviously, no, here. now I couldn't for other reasons as I well. I mean, if yeah, you are I, going to... Now I couldn't because there's no way the guest had ever come out if, if I'd just done If that, you are but. going to, please put it on your own. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just yeah. for the... You know, yeah, because it's because it's not the first Sunday of the month. <laughs> <laughs> Live from King's Place in London, the Spontaneity Shop presents the Guilty Feminist with me, Deborah Francis White, guest host Jessica Costacu, and our very special guest, Nicole Lecky, with music Grace Petrie. This is The Guilty Feminist, the podcast in which we explore our noble goals as 21st century feminists and the hypocrisies and insecurities which undermine them. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we either have to join in or not join in. So let's go for joining. So I'm going to go... Uh, I'll say the hypocrisies and insecurities and the hypocrisies and insecurities which undermine them. Strong word. I'm Deborah Francis White. With me is Jessica Foster Q. We wish you a merry festive season. We wish you a merry festive season, area. Happy birthday to God. <laughs> Do you know, in our family, yes. we sing Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. When we, you know, when you bring out the brandy with the cake, the the not cake. What am I saying? I don't know that bit. You bring out the plum pudding, and you, you know you light the fire on. You put oh, all, you brandy all on. the booze on. Yeah, yeah. And one person eats one bite, and somebody <laughs> took four years soaking it in a dungeon. Exactly. <laughs> it's always Uncle Mike. <laughs> um, we sing because it's like a. We turn the lights out because. Of the, Can I pick a bit of hair off your face? Mm. We sing happy birthday to Jesus, happy birthday to you. Yeah. And when Steve came for the first time, mm. he's from Syria, didn't know any of the Christmas customs at all. Oh, we had to explain... Think that was real. Well, we had to explain things like there's a tree indoors and, you know, he'd be asking questions like, why do you put the presents in socks? And <laughs> you start to realise how absolutely wild Christmas is yeah. when you're introducing it to someone who doesn't have the same frame of reference. Oh, that's really um, nice. 
And then we got to the point where it was happy birthday to Jesus, happy birthday to you. And I said to him, oh, Steve, just so you know, if you go to someone else's house at Christmas, that part's not normal. And he went, okay, he said, thank God. So no one else sets fire to a pudding. And I went, no, they all do that. <laughs> it's just the song. And he went, brilliant. He, he, just, he was just flabbergasted by the number of weirdnesses up to and including Santa, because I said, do you yeah. have anything like that in your culture? And he went, do we tell children to go to sleep because a burglar's going to break in? <laughs> no, we don't, because that's traumatising for children. He's not a burglar, though, is he? He's giving, not taking. You yeah, have to say burglar backwards. Ral Rub. <laughs> we used to leave a bucket of water for the reindeer. Whoa, you've gone overboard. <laughs> they can just drink stuff. Snow. You don't leave a drink. Well, I rain, grew up in Australia, and there was very little snow. In oh, of course. So you had to have like sunshine snacks. What did you leave out for them to eat? Just like fresh fruit and a margarita for Santa. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a beer. A beer. Was it a yeah, cold, cold beer? A cold for beer Santa. and a piece of Christmas cake for Santa. And uh, the. Well, you had to give them. Can you imagine the reindeers in 40 degree heat? They yeah, would genuinely indeed. dehydrate if children didn't leave the water out for them. Yeah, so rem- right. let's not forget their imaginary. <laughs> you do not know if there are any children in tonight and their relationship with Santa. From my language up until this point, I fucking hope there aren't any children in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening at home, we've edited that bit out because we don't upset the children who listen in the car. I mean, imaginary in, far- in your mind. Yeah, and sorry, the, the reindeers. <laughs> what children are being allowed to listen to this? It's <laughs> <laughs> a great point, actually. Okay, all right, fair enough. If we are to acknowledge that the patriarchy... If you're listening, it... little one, <laughs> when the one called Jess does her I'm a feminist butts, go la 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 la. <laughs> children, gender is a construct and so is Santa Claus. <laughs> Stage the incredible Jessica Foster Q. Hello. <laughs> um, hi everyone. Um, so at the moment, I'm trying to put together. Uh, uh, well, I'm not. Tr- I am trying. Yeah, I'm trying to get together. I'm lucky enough to make a whole radio series um, all about weightlifting. I really love weightlifting. Um, is anyone in here lo- love weightlifting? Oh, a few people. Um, uh, this, I'm finding the material that I'm writing about this Im- impossible to try at um, most gigs because uh, if you say, does anyone really love weightlifting? Um, no one cheers and uh, every time I've tried it, at least someone loudly goes, no! <laughs> uh, people feel quite strongly about it. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it. I think most, a lot of people, think, uh, I'm not allowed to use her in my comedy at all anymore. I've made a pact, but um, I'm, not, I'm not allowed to talk about my mum. But... <laughs> I think a lot of people assume you mean bodybuilding, where you, um, you sort of eat a lot of extra protein and lift weights in order to become more muscular. Um, but that's not like all weightlifting at all. That's, um, that's like um, assuming that all weightlifters are bodybuilders, because that involves masses of controlled eating and loads of stuff that I'm not interested in. But, um, but, but also, not disparaging that some people do it are amazing, but I think it's a misconception the vast majority of weightlifting is just picking up weights it's just getting stronger it's just just the joy in the action itself it's not about changing your aesthetic at all Um, assuming that all people uh, that lift weights are bodybuilders is like assuming that all people that go for a run are in danger of becoming sonic Um, (laughs) there's a if you're a woman who lifts weights um, you're never less than 10 metres away from a woman called mum (laughs) um, (laughs) saying oh wow don't get too bulky Um, (laughs) And you know, do you know the work that it would take to get bulky as a weightlifter? It's extraordinary. The, the effort it takes, the hours and the daily effort in the gym. You'd have to be in there for hours and hours every day. You'd have to be controlling what you ate. You'd have to be eating at times you didn't want to eat. You had to put an enormous shift in that the vast majority of people aren't interested in ever doing. Um, and I think there's something very um, misogynistic in this idea of like, let's just don't get bulky. You mustn't get bulky. And also, this, if you're going to the gym and lifting weights three times a week, you're not magically going to fucking turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger at the peak of his bodybuilding career. Um, assuming that everybody who lifts weights is going to do that is like uh, kind of, I don't know, assuming that anybody who tries swimming is um, going to become too dolphin-y. 
and I was going, mm, can you just stick to wits? Because I, I don't want it to get too dolphin-y. I don't, I don't want to end up having to hang around with Howard from Neighbours. Um, he's so good at swimming, he came back from a year at sea. Just not even in a ship. Just he's, Anyway, he wrote himself back into a soap opera that he... Um, was a writer off a long time ago, and I need to get a lot, much more topical reference. There was a bit to it for that. Um, yeah, so um, I have to. I'm, I'm aware that weightlifting is very niche. Um, I'm going to keep this quite brief tonight and just give you some snippets of it. I am also aware that lots of people aren't interested in that. I'm going to try and make people. I'm going to try and make it engaging. If you've got no interest in it at all, I have tried to be good at types of PE that are less niche. I bet we've got people in who like swimming. Yes, I also like swimming, but I don't love it. wasn't the thing that made me fall in love. Um, I do like swimming a lot, but I find it very hard to um, find a middle place between if you're doing lengths, sort of, it is getting boring now, and I've gone so fast, I'm too young to die. Um, uh, also, open water swimming, absolutely lovely. Um, I'm not quite there yet. Give me another decade. I know it's coming for me. Um, running, I bet we've got runners in. We've got runners in. Yes, people love running. Um, so people, t- 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 no, I don't. No, it's just like actually, no. I know I do it as punishment for eating. All oh, right, it sparks some conversation. It tickles me. Um, I did try it. I've tried it. Um, I did the Couch to Five K app. I did the app. What a brilliant app! Um, I say that because it, I finished it. I never thought I'd do that. Let's be clear. I didn't run five k. Um, but I did my bouncy walk for over half an hour. I never thought I'd run for half an hour. That is extraordinary that it worked. I did it with the brilliant voice of um, the amazing Sarah Millican, a queen of stand-up co- comedy. Um, um, and you can choose a celebrity to guide you through it, and they give you like some brilliant pep talks, and hers are a met. You can just imagine how like awesome she is on there. If you haven't had... She got me through it, basically. She was so good at it that I found, actually, that I was here... I'd hear her... Um, Sometimes I hear in my head guiding me through other bits of life that I'm just pretending to enjoy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'll be like washing up for the third time that day and I hear her there going, you never thought you'd be doing this three times a day. You're amazing. <laughs> I'm doing the laundry for the 50th time that week, you know, and she'd be like, if you keep going at this pace at the end of this, you can have a banana. <laughs> I'll be doing a scrub in the toilet, the worst of all the jobs, and I'll hear her there going, for as long as you can, continue to breathe in and out through your nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought of the wrong one. And then it dawned on me, I don't think ever it was running 5K I particularly cared about. Um, I'm pretty sure what I wanted all along was just compliments from a superior comedian. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, it, running has never set my heart o- on fire. I fell in love with um, weightlifting when I um, started doing a type of movement f- for joy, not for any reason like to deserve to eat or to change my body or to chase an elusive five minutes of thinness. It took me into my 30s to go, well, you could just do the thing you find fun. Um, and it's so joyful. Everybody will have different things that they find fun. I'm fascinated about it. So um, I've, having, I've been having a go at uh, various types of weightlifting from strongman to powerlifting to Olympic lifting. Um, sort of and investigating it learning about all these different types of stuff um, I had no idea what the differences between these things were um, oh it's so interesting oh, uh, some brief snippets um, my current favourite lift at the moment is a powerlifting lift called bench press I believe it's the most feminist of all the lifts um, because it starts with a lovely lie down <laughs> and that is nice you lie down and then you get the bar um, from sort of just sort of above you to down to chest and back up again and that's why I believe it's the most feminist of the lifts is because it's the only type of PE I've discovered so far where it is actually sort of in your favour to have quite big tits <laughs> Um, Olympic lifting is the most technical type of lifting. Um, there are two lifts, that's it. You've probably seen Olympic lifting in the, <laughs> in the Olympics. Do you know the Olympics? Um, you heard of them? Yeah, there's two lifts, uh, they're, they're, and they've both got silly names. Uh, they're called Snatch, Crop, and um, Clean and Jerk. Um, <laughs> one sounds like something you'd tell off a toddler for, um, and the other one sounds like a very efficient date night. Um, <laughs> And obviously, in the modern age, if you're going to practice as a lifter, you post your lifts on social media and stuff. So as a woman who does Olympic lifting, you're never less than 10 feet away from a man called Dave saying, no, snatch. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, In fairness to Dave, um, uh, there are some similarities between the two types of snatch. Um, A lot of men think it's a lot more mysterious than it is. (laughs) Mastering both types of snatch involves timing, rhythm and knowing the exact point to go from gentle to powerful. Um, But ultimately, with both of them, it it mainly comes down to just how quickly you can just get under it. (laughs) 
Ja, ik vind dat zet. Jessica Falsterkeel, everybody! Amazing. Hallo, Guilty Feminist. This is Deborah. Just briefly interrupting to let you know that we have a big Guilty Feminist live show for International Women's Day at Leicester Square Theatre in London on the 4th of March. Get your tickets now. It's going to be a spectacular one. We'll be in King's Place in London on the 17th of March. Get your tickets now. We've been having some fabulous times recently back out at live shows. We miss you. Come back out. Get tickets soon, though, because a lot of them are selling out. And please don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. Even if you've rated and reviewed it before, it really helps other people find it. You can rate, review and subscribe every episode if you want to. Please give us five stars and tell people about the podcast online or with your face. You can also join our Patreon to get ad-free episodes. And now back to the podcast. Our guest today is a writer, musician, actress and executive producer adapting her own critically acclaimed one-woman play, Super Ho, into the critically acclaimed BBC drama, Mood. Apparently the BBC weren't keen on it being called Super Ho. I don't know why. I love it. She has explored sex work, self-expression, and the weighty impact of social media on young women through a unique lens. She just won the Netflix Award for New Talent at the Women in Film and Television Awards and the RTS Award for Best Original Score. Please welcome to the stage the incredible Nicole Leckie! Come take a mic. Hello, hello. Hi. Hey. Hello, Nicole. Thank you so much for joining us. Are you okay? I'm pretty good, thanks, yeah. Yeah. Hurrah. Not bad. Um, can you please tell us all about Super Ho? It just sounds like the best name for a show ever. It is yeah. the best name for a show. <laughs> How come the BBC did... Did the BBC not want you calling it Super Ho? No, the BBC really did. Oh. Actually, the BBC the were like... Versions. All over it. Um, it then got picked up to go global. Ah. And... It was a bit like, is it going to travel globally in different languages and all the rest of that stuff? So we had to come up with a new name or yeah. have one name here yeah. and then a different yeah. name sort of in every country, which felt a bit complicated. <laughs> yeah, no, it probably is a wise move, but I mourn the loss of Super Ho. I do, every uh, day. Can you tell us about the live show Super Ho and, and what it explored, what it was about? So the live show, it was on at the Royal Court. Nice. Um, and that was in 2019, which it was sort of... In the long I thought you were going to say, like, ages ago then. Well, that, I mean, that it feels, feels ages ago, though, because years of the, the, the before times, yeah. yeah. It it's was, the before times, it is. It's in the long ago now. Yeah, the sort of the forgotten yesteryear. Oh. Um, and so I, I performed it there. It's just me. I did sort of all the characters... Wrote the music, sang the songs. Wrote the um, theme tune, sang theme the theme tune. Theme tune, sang yeah. the theme tune. <laughs> and um, it went down really well. It, it, it was great. And it was it's about um, a young woman called Sasha. Yes. And she's a wannabe musician. And she quite troubled. She's struggling with her family. Her sort of relationship has fallen apart. She's been with him since she was a teenager. And um, she gets kicked out of the family home. And she meets this influencer who leads her into the world of influencing and sex work. And um, that's the quite a big journey she goes on. Wow. And when you came to uh, translate this for television, um, was there, were there any big changes that you had to make or how did you lift it for the screen? One of the big changes was kind of socially that happened in that it was... Um, she was kind of doing phone sex, actually, in um, kind of webcamming in the play version. And then when I was writing it during lockdown, mm -hmm. there was obviously the big boom on OnlyFans. Right. And I was like, oh, if she was doing it now, it would, it would be, be OnlyFans. There was a lot going on. And did you consult people who did this kind of sex work? Mm -hmm. And how was that? What did you learn from that? I mean, I learned a hell of a lot. I mean, even when I wrote the play, I was speaking to women on kind of Snapchat and things, um, people that were monetizing sex work through, um, you know, just sort of using PayPal and getting access to, to, you know, videos that they were making on Snapchat, and that's how they kind of had agency over it. And then 
when I, I sort of, you know, doing the TV show, there was a bigger team. So I had a researcher who could connect me with women who actually, you know, wanted to talk as well. But to be honest, I, I spoke to most women because I just hit them up. I sent them DMs. Yeah. And um, they just responded more personally to me because I was like, you know, I'm a writer. I'm writing this show. Yeah. Um, this is my kind of perspective on it. I'm definitely not like anti-sex work or anything like that. And, and I'm kind of curious to know how you got into it because I felt like there was a very, just there was kind of the trope of what a sex worker is like or how they got into sex work. And I really wanted to kind of look at a very normal, quote unquote, you know, um, woman who could fall into it, really. And... Or, or, in fact, rise into it in some cases. Yeah, like and I rise. Think, you know, like I feel like a lot of people who mm. you know I've talked to have said, this is a really amazing way for me to make a living where I feel completely independent and safe mm. and uh, that it's, it's something where I'm not owned by anyone and I'm not sort yeah. of controlled or, you know, I'm not going in and working for someone else for eight to ten hours a day for no money. Mm. Um, what were the positives that people told you? The positives, I guess, is is the agency is is like you say, and especially now, cost of living crisis, all the rest of it. Um, you are you're able to call your own shots, your own hours, make money. People also do enjoy having sex, yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, enjoy meeting new people and kind of the experiences and the travel. Those were really the kind of the perks of the jobs, the kind of relationships that they had with other women and. And and those, you know, yeah, the relationships to kind of lean on. Those were, I feel like, the main positives. I, I remember having like a quite a revelatory time reading. My friend, a comedian called Sarah Pascoe, wrote a book called Sex, Power, Money on this topic and mm. thereabouts. And she, I read it, and but she did a podcast series with it where she talked to all different types of sex workers. And I had like so many moments of going like, oh god, I've no idea. I've never thought about it from that point of view. Did you have any, mm. um, like? Did you have any moments during the research for any of it where you were like, oh, I, were you uh, dug up any misconceptions that you had just built in from society or had any opinion? I mean, I think I had my it? own, like, hang-ups where it was this thing because I didn't personally feel like I would do it, you know? I was sort of fascinated by it, curious, wanting to know more about it, but sort of, I guess, by the end of it, sort of depending on who I spoke to, I think, um, I would think, well, Actually, yeah, it does really work for you, you know. I, I think it, it's so personal to whoever you're speaking to, like whether you're speaking to a sort of 17-year-old who's doing it, to somebody, you know, who feels like, you know, they really have made a decision to go into it. And I did come away from that thinking, oh, actually, this is like a brilliant job for you. This is kind of perfect. This is, um, yeah, you're not, you're not, you know, all those, like I say, all the stereotypes of, look, you're forced into it or you're, you know... Um, and you... are there any... Were there any negative sides to it that surprised you? Again, I'm not sure if the, the negative surprised me because I think we're sort of thrown into, you know, often going, like, this is what's so bad about sex work and, you know, it's this awful thing. So I think you are really acutely aware of, like, what the the negatives are but I think it's the um on only fans though mm. I mean obviously in sex work where you are in you know having contact with people that you can see you know all dangers of that job mm -hmm. of course and downsides to that job um depending on the person and the interaction and, and the often the government structures around it yeah um but in terms of only fans what are the downsides that are I think the kinds of mess, like even though you're not maybe being physical, it's still the the level of it's kind of like any social media, you know. It's like how you it's use access it. Access to you. It's access to you, and it's people that think um, they know you, they kind of own you. Why haven't you replied to me? Why haven't you got back to me in in this length of time? And and also the things that people still send you on OnlyFans, and also it can often be you know, once you've formed a relationship with somebody, then it can become, oh, well, if I paid you this much money, would you meet me in real life? And then the temptation can kind of creep in and... and I, 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 Which, I, and again, it could be... That could be a, a completely consensual be situation. And totally. It could be something that you're resisting because that's a boundary for you, but someone's pressuring yeah. you and... I mean, I think money. the 
most of the women I guess I spoke to were women who had really kind of fallen into it. It's not to say that they hadn't then made peace with what they were doing and were then happy, but I think most the decision was mainly financial to go into sex work. You know, it wasn't sort of... Um, I just love sex and, and like, for the most part, the women I spoke to, it was definitely um, looking at hidden homelessness and, and um, people sort of exchanging sex and, you know, kind of that abuse of power, sleeping on somebody's sofa, which, oh, actually, if you sleep with me, then, you know, and, and very, very complex. And the show yeah. goes into those places. Yeah. It, okay. it, and it so really you must does. have had to research it very thoroughly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you, you also look at the impact of social media on young women and how presumably the one thing bleeds into the other. Yeah. Um, what are your insights from that? I mean, I have a very murky, murky, <laughs> like, I don't know, relationship even with my own social media, you know, and how I use it. And, and um, I do just think it can be a force of good or a force of evil, essentially, social media. Um, we were talking in the green room about how I should probably join it, show off some of my dances. Well, I do think you should do that. <laughs> I think, do you have I a TikTok? Do you want no, I can't. Do you have a lift, a t- TikTok for No, lifting? I've just got one very confusing Instagram that people come to because they hear I'm a comedian and they go, why is it all PE? <laughs> it's PE, <laughs> yeah. Why is it all PE? Um, I'd, I'd, I'd watch it. And <laughs> can I just say, you've won an award for, an RTS award for original yeah. score. I uh-huh, have, uh-huh, yeah. And does that mean you, are you a composer or you sing your own songs or both? Or? Well, I did also... Um, write and work on the score with the composer amazing um, because there's original music in the show and we kind of wanted some of the original songs to be built into the score and have sort of a repeated kind of theme melody across the series that. so i'm so excited yeah i was in sainsbury's though when i got the award <laughs> why were you in sainsbury's brilliant because I didn't feel very well. And then, um, so I wasn't able to go to the, the award show. You were well enough to go to the art. Uh, well, I was Did hungry. you send them a I little thank you really video from Sainsbury's? Because that would have been the most baller move. No, I'd well, think. and do you know what's really funny? I thought, well, I definitely haven't won because, like, you'd have to send a video, surely. And I really didn't feel well. And I was like, it's probably fine. <gasps> and um, they didn't ask me for a video. And then I was in Sainsbury's and got a text. And I was like, oh, no. I'm like here buying soup. <laughs> oh. So you could have been up there on the stage in a glittering gown. Thank Coughing, you. but yeah, thank I could have been. <laughs> um, well, listen, if you'd like to give your thank you speech now. Oh, my God, no. You can go. You can go <laughs> no. We can make this. It can't course. be more awkward than when I picked Debs up. You missed a bit earlier. <laughs> oh, we could have made half me. a piggyback. Oh, we could make me the award and you could give her me. I could present I you could, as well, the Royal like like Television <laughs> Society Best yeah. Score. Absolutely. Well, Your listen. Prize is we are. It's a whole person. Debs. It's a person. <laughs> Debs. Uh, we are. We are. Queen of So feminism. thrilled uh, that Mood is doing so incredibly well, and you've won uh, best newcomer uh, for the Netflix award for new talent. Um, I, I was there for that. You were there for that. Yeah. <laughs> you learned. I'd your love it if you were like for that one. I was actually an M and S. Yeah, well, I'm just touring the shopping. <laughs> it was a slightly more glamorous award to Waitrose. Yeah, um, but when I get my bath drop in Harrods, um, <laughs> uh, listen, I'm I'm really excited to see what you do uh, next, uh, but also very excited to watch Mood, which is on iPlayer now. If you are in America, it's on AMC, the same place as Mad Men, my favorite show. Uh, so check it out uh, if it's not in the country where you are demand that it is oh yes and I'm yeah. sure that it will be I soon we really, are you working on anything else at the moment I am I am back writing um, writing TV film all kinds well, of things really. we can please let us know when, when you're doing whatever you're doing next and please work, look out for the incredible Nicole Leckie <laughs> thank you and keep that applause going for the wonderful Grace Petrie Grace, are you going to sing us? Hello, are you going to sing us a song? So I've just, I've written a very commercial, feel good Christmas song. Um, so yeah, this is a this is my attempt at one of those. Okay. 
The fairy lights are twinkling, the mince pies smell divine, the Arctic circle's sinking, but let's have a jolly time. Oh, I've come here to be festive, not bring the mood down low. So let's get shaking, Stevens playing on the stereo. Oh, I'll make a batch of mulled wine to fill me with good cheer. I'll go and visit Santa, and when he turns to me and asks me what I really want for Christmas morn this year, I'll say that. I just want the Tories to fuck off and stop ruining our lives and dismantling the country. I just want the Tories to fuck off, cause too many folks this year are spending Christmas cold and hungry. Unless you are a millionaire and very close to death, there's no way that their policies can help you. So I just want the Tories to fuck off, it's the decent thing to do. Guilty Feminist Christmas number one! Now I know what you're thinking, you don't want to hear me moan. It's Christmas time, not question time, just leave us all alone. But it's hard to feel too merry when there's brand new coal mines planned and sewage in the ocean and the gas bill is foreground. And I'm scared of loved ones dying waiting for an ambulance. How many basic failures? Will it take to stop you voting for these cars? I just want the Tories to fuck off And stop ruining our lives And dismantling the country I just want the Tories to fuck off Cos too many folks this year Are spending Christmas cold and hungry Unless you are a millionaire And very close to death There's no way that their policies can help you so I just want the Tories to fuck off It's the decent thing to do And I know they've lost support At least according to the polls So maybe we might get them out next time Then I guess we will have Labour Who might be sort of fine But still pandering to racists And tinkering on the margins Of our planet's undeniable decline Merry Christmas! I just want the Tories to fuck off Yeah, that's all I'm asking for On my father Christmas letter I just want the Tories to fuck off Because deep down in my soul I believe we deserve better Than private dental practices And overcrowded trains And waiting hours for ambulances Refugees on planes And our postal staff and railway workers Nurses forced to strike and Matt Hancock on TV doing what he fucking likes And 5pm's in six years who just fuck things up and flee That's why all I want for Christmas, yeah all I want for Christmas Is for everyone to sing it now with I just want the Tories to fuck off, want the Tories to fuck off, want the Tories to fuck off I just want the Tories to fuck off, want the Tories to fuck off, want the Tories to fuck off Everybody! I just want the Tories to fuck off, 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 just want the Tories to fuck off, want the Tories to fuck off, want the Tories to fuck off. Merry Christmas, everybody! Christmas, Grace Petrie. Can I have a big round of applause for Grace Petrie? Woo-hoo! Big round of applause for Chloe Petz. Um, Chris Sharp, who does our uh, sound, who's always here, even on Christmas. And Tom Selinski, who's out the back with the clipboard going, get off the stage now. And everybody at King's Place. Woo-hoo! Feminist with me, Deborah Francis White, guest host, Jessica Fox, Q, and our very special guest, Chloe Pets, with music from Grace Pinchy, recording engineer was Chris Sharp, the Guilty Feminist theme tune was composed by Mark Mott, the producer was Tom Sims, and the Thanks to Zoe, Sally, and everyone at King's Place, as well as all of you for listening. For more information about this and other episodes, visit guiltyfeminist.com! I'm, I'm really
really excited to see what you do uh, next, uh, but also very excited to watch Mood, which is on yeah. the BBC. And w- is it also on Netflix? It is not on Netflix, actually. It's on BBC or AMC. Okay. Uh, so I'll say that again then. Um, I'm also very excited to see Mood, which is on BBC. When will it be on? It, it's already out. It's, it's on, on iPlayer, iPlayer now. IPlayer. Okay, let me take this again. Um, <laughs> oh, here we go, mate. Yeah. It's crackling. Yeah. Um, the Guilty Feminist is provided exclusively from Acast. Find it wherever you get your podcasts.